I thought that it would be really cool if we managed to make the tool used for making deep fakes really good at forecasting financial markets and whether a stock was going to go up and down. Hi, I'm Milena Vuletic and I will be talking about FinGAN, forecasting and classifying financial time series via generative adversarial networks. I called my supervisor and I said, well, we have, I mean, I emailed him. That well, I have this idea, it's a bit unconventional, but what if we give the generator the information about the real data, that is the how it performs in a financial way, what is the PNL, what is the sharp ratio, but also how close it gets to the real value, mean squared error, on top of the information given by the discriminator. So this would be somewhat of a bridge in between probabilistic forecasting and an uh, unsupervised learning and a supervised learning supervised learning setting where we had this discriminator component which was going to give us distributional forecasts and give us many many samples that that we want but also we're going to have this information to drive the generator GANs usually but they can uh, get stuck in sharp local minima and it would be very difficult for them to escape. So for example, if you're tr trying to sim generate photos of dogs and cats and you generate one really good photo of a cat and the discriminator likes it, then the generator is like, well, I'm just going to keep on doing what I know how to do. And then you're not going to improve, uh, Im improve at all. But what we did was we gave it some extra information so that it was able to overcome that, overcome that problem and uh, the distributions were then shifted sometimes in the correct direction but obviously not always it matters what it does on average and we then tested our model on um, an out of sample data so we took our trained generator after the training is done you usually discard the discriminator because it's not useful for you anymore uh, and then we took uh, around two years of two years of data from 2020 until 2022 uh, where for each day we had close to open and open to close returns because we also worked with not high frequency data so our model will probably perform better uh, if we had uh, uh, more data available and uh, then for each of these forecasts we would see uh, where is our distribution supported? So for example, if we think that there is 51% chance that it's positive and 49% that it's negative, then we would make a trade where we go long with weight 0.02. But if we think it's 98% negative, then we would go short with 0.96. So the difference in between the difference in between the two. And what was this able to do is generate very stable PLs meaning that our shape sharp ratios were uh, very good and excellent they were usually above one we managed to even have them above two for etfs on raw returns uh, and we m in some cases even managed to get above three for for stocks and this was higher than uh, the next best thing which in our case was an lstm lstms are stand lstm stands for a long shorter memory network and it was actually one of the components of our of our GAN, so it's not super surprising that we managed to do to do better. But it also is because GANs are very difficult to train and LSTMs are very difficult to train, and we also managed to have better performance than uh, standard econometric tools such as Arima. But we also tested the long-only strategies, which surprisingly or unsurprisingly didn't perform well at all. Perhaps because it was COVID that we tested it. <laughs>